Welcome, Robin Welling. You are president of the European Solar Thermal Industry Federation and you are managing director of the Austrian collector manufacturer and turnkey supplier TSAN. On this conference, Eurosun, you will take part in a discussion which is called Solar Energy in Europe in the current market development situation. You are president since six years, so what have changed in Brussels ever since? Well, a lot have changed because I believe that the market is uh, like more than 50% down if I compare it to my first period as, uh, as STF president, which was my first election was in 2006. Um, so we've been through uh, very good times, uh, 2008 for instance, but since 2008 basically we see strongly declining markets, which to my opinion um, was caused by a lot of factors, but uh, one main factor is, uh, is the driver in this industry and, and nobody believed me when I told a lot of people about that in Staffelstein a couple of years ago that the fossil fuel, fuel prices play a role and, and, and they do and they still do and, and well today it's a, it's a very exciting day because since a lot of months at least fossil fuel prices start growing you know, or increasing so we hope that that recovers a little bit uh, our market levels. You, uh, I think you had one vision when you started as president. This was bridging the activities of STIF, which is solar thermal based, to the other renewable heat associations as well as the uh, heating industry. Was this strategy successful? Yes, well, we are on, on, in Brussels. Uh, our office is on the same floor with the two other renewable heating and cooling uh, uh, technologies, uh, geothermal and, um, and biomass. So that that we you know we have a, a joint voice. I even uh, went into uh, sessions with uh, with high level events in Brussels, uh, representing the other two associations, so geothermal and biomass. Even with uh, the presence of uh, Sefcoich and Cagnete and Ristori, so that that voice is uh, was made clear. Uh, the cooperation with uh, or, or building the bridges between uh, the classical heating associations like PDH and P and, and EHI. Uh, has been done, so we, we are in a, in a daily conversation with, uh, with EHI and, uh, and, and BDH. EHI needs us because for them it's very difficult to make a strong point for a single technology uh, or, for instance, make a strong voice about uh, centralization or not centralization of the heating and cooling market, which STIF in a lot of uh, circumstances can do better. So we, we, we communicate in our board. We have a major uh, boiler manufacturer named uh, BDR, BDR Tamiya, um, which is a very big uh, player in, uh, in Europe, uh, part of the top five. Um, and as a second board member, we have uh, Lothar Breidenbach from BDH, today and uh, so I, I think the, the, the bridge has been built and, and, and I'm very happy about that. I would of course um, hope that uh, the, board, the classical boiler manufacturers would financially support ESTIF a little bit more because if somebody wants to know in Brussels from political side something about solar heating uh, and cooling uh, they come to ESTIF and so I, I think we need to be better supported by them. But Okay. I think we have a very special year this year in Brussels because a lot of the directives are renewed. So which um, strategies or, or um, well, implementation uh, suggestions have ESTIF for these new um, drafted directives? Well, we know that you know, in, a, in a lot of cases in the, in the strategy papers of the European Commission, uh, solar thermal has been perceived very uh, positive and, and, and very uh, as an existing technology which would really, could really make the dif difference. But unfortunately, uh, we are not the only advocating association in Brussels. Others did a very good job, uh, especially the, the, uh, if we look at the, the plans for the electrification of the heating and cooling market which is a nice plan, but to my opinion, not feasible. And another point is, uh, is the centralization of the heating and cooling market, uh, which make it, make it more sexy for governments, but definitely not for single consumers, because you know, their individuality, w individuality on heating and cooling will be lost. And, and so that, you know, it's, um, it's challenging, and, um, and most probably this will lead for solar thermal 
uh, to a centralization of, of, of larger solar thermal uh, installations like we see it in Denmark on, on district heating. Uh, that will definitely spread some wings in, uh, within Europe, yes. I think solar thermal is the only um, technology which doesn't have a global voice. That means a global council or a, a reunified association council. Uh, do you have plans for that? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, we have been in, in discussions a couple of years ago. And of course, it's very interesting to see what's happening on, uh, on global certification because that in some way uh, links it to a global association. There has been three years ago uh, uh, some voices that we would need that. The problem is just if we already suffer to get industry support within Europe, how, how can we have uh, support by, by global players? Who is a global player in solar thermal? Um, there's hardly any companies, so um, I would be very interested uh, in, in having conversations uh, on this topic because I believe that uh, uh, we could find uh, uh, some lobby levels where uh, a global voice would be interesting and of course uh, backed up by countries such as uh, India, Brazil, China where we still have uh, growing markets. Um, I believe we could make uh, um, some good floor for solar thermal globally. Okay, thank you. Have a nice conference. Thank you very much.